Hey guys, how's it? Aloha. I wanted to circle back to uh, Periphery um, when I put out that video last month. Um, I didn't realize that I had a little more knowledge about uh, the musicians than I thought I did because I didn't put together some of the videos I saw coming across them on like how-tos and guitar tones and stuff as much as just listening to their music. And so, and then of course everybody wants me to do Reptile. I have to admit, I kind of listened through half of it so I can't do a raw reaction, but I will circle back into it. Uh, but I just wanted to pick one and I just noticed that a lot of people said uh, there in my comments, uh, Marigold, so I'm gonna do that. Um, thank you all for your comments. Thank you for sharing your links and your thoughts. Um, it does mean a lot to me, like I always say. I learn a lot from the bands and the artists and stuff by some of the knowledge that the loyal fan has of the bands as well. Also, uh, thank you very much. Oh, I don't have my coffee with me. Oh, this, ooh, what kind of reaction will this be? I'm kidding. Um, thank you very much for buying me a cup of coffee. You know my channel's not monetized, even though ads might run. They're not mine. It's a copyright claim from the publisher, so they run it. And, uh, and also, you'll find links for this song below. Uh, any periphery uh, CDs, vinyl, and stuff will also be below, uh, as well as a link for the headsets. Um, these are AKG uh, 420s, and I've been using them ever since the Last Supper. So, <laughs> And they're still solid and pretty true to my ears. Okay, here we go. Uh, periphery Marigold. All right. Super, super, super crispy, state-of-the-art, I hate to use that as a cliche saying, but the engineering, I usually, you know, I, I'm going to start really quick just with that arpeggiation, or actually it's an ostinato, what they call in orchestrating of the strings. Now, it could be hybrid strings, you know, like a really super cool string module, or it could be live, I, I don't know, I'm not going to say that I know, because I don't. Um, I loved the, uh, the phrasing of that, I believe it sounded like it was in 7-8. Um, and uh, there was the, once the drums came in, of course, then the guitar actually was in unison with that pattern there. And I think at the end of 12 bars or 16 bars, they, they threw in a 2-4 there for a turnaround, but I'm not too sure. Okay, now I've got to go right back into, because I think we can all agree, I don't need to say much about the musicians because they're already epic and stellar. So this is, if you've never been, uh, through a journey like this with me, I don't break down on the theoretical, even though I kind of started off on that a little bit. I like to just bring nuances to the surface so that you're already in love with this music, or if you're new to this music, it gives you something else to kind of dial into without demystifying it. That's, that's what I believe theoretical stuff sometimes does, and I'm not like super qualified to do the real super deep ones. That's for other guys that can do that. Um, I got to go to the engineering on this. I, I've been around long enough to transition through old school analog, you know, just eight track, 16 track, 24 track, all analog. As a matter of fact, in Los Angeles, I was in the very first studio that received the Trident Diane, 
which well, that was kind of a, a hard workaround. But I have transitioned my career as an engineer and on a very mellow level, you know, demos and stuff, nothing famous or anything. Um, and then also now all of a sudden with a digital world, Pro Tools, uh, Cubase, Nuendo, all the plugins and the accessibility to uh, plugins and stuff like that. The engineering world has grown with the tools that uh, have been given to engineers. Uh, a lot of times producers and songwriters and musicians are also engineers as well. When you grow with those kind of, of tools, also your ability to go beyond what you may have started as a base as an engineer is at an all-time high right now. All that being said, the engineering on this is an absolute professorial study of excellent separation in tone, placement of uh, the layers in the mix. Um, it's just absolutely mind-numbing because a lot of times if you have a lot of things flooding a particular tone zone in a song, sometimes it's hard. Where do you want to give the most power and stuff? And it just seems like the engineering on this, they found out or he or she, I don't know, may have found out uh, or at, in, in this process just an absolutely perfect uh, placement both tone and um, musicianship and stuff uh, I mean uh, and the instruments <sighs> the older I get the better I was I'm sorry I blank every now and then and I'm also when I listen to something the first time too I'm overwhelmed with a lot of stuff that's why I've got to write things down sometimes is because I'm like what did I just hear if I miss anything I always usually go back into my comments once I render the video out and I'll post something up there um, the vocals are I, I don't want to sound just just like canned response like, oh, they're wonderful. <laughs> but they're absolutely crazy. You know, the vocalist, you guys know I don't listen to lyrics. I just listen to the to the vocalist as an instrument as an instrument. Much like a guitar that can do so many different things with a guitar. You got plugins, you got stomps, you got all kinds of stuff. The vocalists have those same um, uh, abilities, and the more I dive deeper into these bands I've never heard of, the more I'm just blown away about the ability of the vocalists to have clear, soft, mellow, you know, uh, kind of vocals, and then kick in the power, and then also the, the harmonies on the vocals are absolutely wonderful. I'm a harmony freak, if done right, not overdone. Um, anyhow, uh, I gotta, I'm just going to keep going. I just wanted to bring this up in, in the engineering sense and get this already out there that this is such a chicken skin, you know, uh, what do you call goosebumps, joy to be listening to this engineering wise. So now I'm going to try to bring myself back into uh, more of the, the song aspect of it and, and enjoy that. And also a double bridge. What I loved about this, it sounded like, sounded like, I don't know. So you have the verse, you had the intro, you had the verse, and then there was a, a step up in the arrangement, which I thought was great. It kind of it, it took you out of that pocket of what you were locked in with the guitars following that arpeggiation. And it stepped into a really nice change and then stepped into another one before the power hit. At least that's the way I felt it. So um, I like the dynamics of the arrangements and the composition. So that's uh, crazy good. Okay, here we go.
Okay. Um, just two things I want to bring up in this pass, uh, this last passage. Uh, I'm also recognizing the fact that they have a really fat pad, um, which for those of you who don't know, it's a, it's a long synthesized sound that actually cushions. I, I like to call it the synthesized French horns of, of an arrangement. Um, because they're very warm or, or they're very round in the ambience presentation of the sound. So it adds to the thickness of the stereo bit. So they have that going in the background. That's what it sounds like. I can't say I know. <laughs> I hate catching smoke from people going, no, dude, they are. I'm just going, that's why I like to say, I think I know. Um, and the drummer, you know, that last passage as well, um, uh, just just firing on the ghost notes. But I don't know that they're so much ghost notes as they are more pur purposeful uh, parts of the rhythmical arrangement with the snare. Um, in what little I know about drumming, I, I think of ghost notes of more ghosty. They're behind it. Where at least in this last section in the passage, it sounded a little more marching um, in its velocity. Uh, not in its arrangement, in the velocity and stuff. And I love that. And he's holding the four on the hi-hat, just keeping you square, keeping you locked in. And um, I just want to say I noticed that. Uh, that was really sick. And also the bass sound. God, I love the bass sound on this one. It was like the last one. I just got through doing a video for um, uh, Haken, and, um, and and there was a very unique unique bass engineering in there that I fell in love with. This has that same thing. I got to get my head away from the engineering, otherwise it's going to take away from the arrangement of the song. But I am uh, I am just freaking out over the engineering on this. But the song is great, and the harmonies again on the vocals. Boy, Jesus, here we go. Wow, that is just, you know what, here's another thing now, we're talking about production, um, you know, many different composers, arrangers, producers use different techniques in building a song. Um, it, it really just depends on, on the journey they want to take you through based on the lyrics. I don't know what the lyrics are, so I don't know what this journey is about. Um, the video was really cool though. The video to me kind of personified the detail of the engineering. <laughs> that video was really detailed and I tried to stay away from it because I'm listening to the music but I couldn't help but notice how detailed that was. It kind of personified the type of engineering and songwriting and arranging. At the very end of the song, they, it almost was like they go ahead and they start fading up or they popped in the faders of all the arrangements coming in to be blended in at the very end. 
you know, there could have been a little arrangement here, a little arrangement here, and a little arrangement here throughout the, uh, the song process. But at the very end, it was just this glorious wall of like, what the fuck? You know, they just, people's elbow. Um, there was that section where they went back into the uh, into the string arpeggiation. And if you notice on that one, it had a little more reverb on it. They wanted to give you more of that abyss kind of vibe. Because, uh, you know, when I peeked over at the video, it looked like, the little monster ninja dude was about to go into some kind of battle. But it was really wide open and really super cool. And yes, apparently there are keyboards in there, so or, or pads and other synths to it to support that. And um, But I, I can't, you know what, I just love listening to new music. Uh, today is one of those days where I needed to just kind of get away from the world. I wanted to just try something new, and I already did with with Haken and now with uh, Periphery and I'm gonna try one more today I just need I just need a lot of music in my head today I wanna thank you guys for coming on this journey with me um, while I'm still enjoying it I love doing this I'm gonna keep just knocking it out until I uh, well like Forrest Gump said I'm tired I wanna go home now <laughs> thanks a lot for the uh, tips for the cup of coffee uh, if you see fit mahalo uh, the link for that's down there headset link song link and everything and uh, thanks for hanging out alright aloha